Hi, welcome to the film recaps, today I am going to show you fantasy and science fiction movie, in 1984 opens with the departure of flight JL-50 out of Kolkata. However, they begin to experience severe turbulence and harsh weather midway through the flight. Communications are abruptly interrupted, and the plane vanishes into thin air. Since that time, not a single piece of information on the disappearance has been discovered. The scene then jumps to the year 2019, 35 years later. We saw a group of young people playing football in the isolated West Bengali village of Lava. In a hilly region like theirs, a big plane suddenly soars over them, which is extremely unusual. The group discovers that the jet has crashed into the adjacent hills as they instantly hurry in that direction. The action then moves to Kolkata, where Shantanu, the main character, is watching a news program on television. According to the report, Flight AO-26, a commercial aircraft carrying a number of well-known individuals, has vanished. There is a possibility that the aircraft has been hijacked. After some time, Shantanu arrives at the Central Bureau of Investigation, where he works. He is a high-ranked officer there, it turns out. Along with his colleague Goranka, he then travels to the crash site to begin his investigation. He first approaches a rescue soldier and asks how things are going. Only two people survive the disaster, the soldier confesses, and the medical care is being given to surviving. The pilot is one of the survivors, and the other is a passenger. The peculiar thing is that a dead passenger is discovered in the cockpit, proving that the aircraft was hijacked before it went down. Following their discussion, the three are about to board a helicopter to travel to the crash scene when the soldier suddenly recalls something crucial. The crashed plane is not the one they are looking for, he informs the CBI officers. It is not, to put it simply, Flight AO-26. In reality, Flight JL-50 vanished 35 years ago. The scene then cuts to the year 1984, where we meet Bihu, a young aspirin pilot from Kolkata. She possesses all the desirable qualities, a lucrative job, a caring family, and a promising future. But for some reason, the last several months have made her angry. Bihu simply ignores her mother and walks away, when she encourages her to forget the past and get better. Bihu is battling for her life in the present day, in the hospital. She is none other than the pilot of the 1984 missing JL-50 flight, which crashed. In the meantime, Shantanu and Goranga visit a school in another rural community. There, they call for Dr. Subroto Das, a professor of physics, and begin questioning him. According to Shantanu, the JL-50 crashed plane had left for its destination in 1984, but failed to arrive the trail. Additionally, he informs the elderly guy that there was an empty spot on the flight and that the ticket belonged to Das alone, and only Das. Das looks genuinely startled for a time, but he states that, because he is getting older, he can't remember the past. After returning home, Dr. Daz starts looking for something. A short while later, he gathers a number of papers and some images and burns them all. This suggests that he may be aware of the jet disaster. Later, a news report discloses that a terrorist group called the ABA has made claims of responsibility. Responsibility for the hijacking of Flight AO-26 and is requesting Partho Majumur's release in exchange for the safety of the passengers. Partho will be put to death in several days. A few days later, pilot Bihu regains consciousness, and Santana goes to question her. It's also said that the authorities will give in to their demands. He first asks her how the plane crashed, and Bihu begins to describe what happened. She reveals that the aeroplane departed at 3 p.m. just like any other day. Everything went smoothly for the first 10 minutes, but then a passenger stormed the cockpit and fatally killed the co-pilot. Then, after giving Bihu some coordinates and threatening her with dire consequences, if she didn't change the plane's course, the weather suddenly became bad. The plane had severe turbulence as a result, and it crashed shortly after. After the tale, Santanu asks Bihu where and when the flight took off. Bihu responds, Kolkata, 1984. Naturally, Shantanu doesn't trust her and accuses her of lying. He then says that they are in 2019, and Bihu is shocked to hear this. The CBI officials visit Bihu's old home and question some of the neighbors there to learn more about her. There aren't many people who know her because the tragedy happened 35 years ago. However, they are fortunate to find a couple that were close to Bihu's family. Bihu's husband confesses that, although she was a talented pilot, her career took a turn for the worse after she began dating a man. Before they were married, he got her pregnant and mysteriously passed away. Bihu's breaking point, nevertheless, occurred when her child was delivered lifeless. Soon after, the husband pulls a photo of Bihu from a photo album and displays it. This was taken in 1984, just before she was killed. Surprise! She resembles the hospital's Bihu exactly. Santanu, who disbelieves in time travel, continues to believe that everything is a lie in spite of the evidence. Later, he returns to the CBI base and listens to the black box recording of JL-50. The co-pilot was assassinated by some hijackers who broke into the cockpit, as Bihu had previously reported. Then, after a while, there was complete silence. 
When Santanu inquires about the last time the black box captured anything, his technician responds with August 23, 1984. Everyone is surprised by this, a black box is practically unbreakable. Hence, they are firmly required to think that the plane has somehow entered the year 2019. Mitra, the second survivor from the JL-50 aeroplane disaster, has returned to consciousness in the meantime. Mitra rushes to Bihu's room to kill her, as soon as a nurse tells him there is another survivor from the crash. Fortunately, a nurse sees him and calls for assistance. However, the insane Mitra holds the nurse at knife point and flees from the scene in the hospital's hallway. Santanu also shows up at the same time and tries to soothe Mitra, but she is unreceptive. Instead, as everyone is least expecting it, he slowly approaches the front door and makes his getaway. Santani chases the lunatic downstairs, but by the time he gets there, Mitra has already gotten away in a car. Santanu then investigates him out of suspicion. He learns that Mitra, a professor at the Kolkata Science Research Center, was a brilliant person. He was a left-wing activist who, 35 years ago, collaborated with a few terrorist groups. Santanu arrives at Mitra's house after locating his address. He discovers a sizable collection of books, documents, and other research materials authored by Mitra throughout his lifetime there. When Santanu opens one of the files, he finds a study titled Project A. He also discovers the JL-50 flight schematic when he turns certain pages. Realizing he chooses to bring the file with him after learning that it is connected to the plane accident. Later, Santanu visits the Kolkata Science Research Center and meets with a professor named Ashwini to learn more about Mitra and his Project A, when Ashwini first learns about that he begins by teaching a history lesson about the project. He notes that the Indian ruler died in 253 BCE. Scholars, scientists, and philosophers from throughout the nation came together to create nine books that discussed many supernatural skills like flying, invisibility, and other abilities. In order to prevent the adversaries from using them for their own purposes, these books were then buried beneath the ground. A team of researchers was assembled to find evidence for the notion after several millennia when some pages from a time travel book were discovered. Project A was the code name for this top secret research initiative, but nothing ever came of it. Santanu asks about Mitra after hearing the tale, but Ashwini responds that he doesn't know anything about him. He proposes that Santanu instead meet Dr. Dawes, saying that the two of them were close friends back then. A furious Santanu confronts Dawes for lying earlier in the day and storms into his home at night. He then urges Dawes to divulge everything while pulling out the Project A paperwork. The elderly man had no choice but to talk. He claims the Project A, which Mitra's father was a part of, was abandoned by the government when no solution could be found. Years later, Mitra carried on his father's studies and after slaving away day and night, he succeeded in cracking the code. Once more, Santanu dismisses the tale as nonsense and refuses to believe it, but Daz assures him that it is all genuine. He goes on to state that Mitra, using his brilliant mind, studied the unfinished Project A papers and discovered the formula that allowed him to find several wormholes in the Earth's atmosphere. It is conceivable to travel through these wormholes in time. Daz adds that as he was Mitra's pupil at the time, he was aware of the entire scheme. Mitra desired to board a plane, take off through the wormhole, and land in another time period. In order to accomplish this, he forged a relationship with Partho Majumar, the terrorist organization's leader who is currently responsible for the hijacking of Flight A026. Finally, Daz says that he decided not to board the plane because he got terrified. He had a gut feeling that the experiment would fail, and it did. Mitra thought the flight would return in 35 hours, but his calculations were off, and the plane disappeared for 35 years. Surprisingly, Santanu still doesn't believe a thing despite hearing all of this information. Daz, though, tells him that the authorities have finally decided to release Partho, the terrorist commander, from custody in two days. He and Mitra can seriously harm the nation if they reunite by utilizing their combined knowledge and strength. Santanu is worried this time, so Daz informs him that there is a method to stop Mitra. He suggests that they use the wormhole to travel to 1984 in order to prevent the hijacking of JL-50 there. If they are successful, there won't be any deaths, and organizations like ABA and crooks like Partho won't ever exist. Santanu agrees, despite his continued hesitation. The pair then travels to the hospital to meet Bihu because she is the only one who knows the location of the wormhole. Bihu is asked for the information by Santanu, but she is reluctant to agree because she is still in disbelief that she has traveled 35 years in the future. She finally agrees after much persuasion, but only if she is allowed to pilot the aircraft. Santanu obviously doesn't want to comply with her requests, but because this is a top-secret operation, he is forced to do the so. The following morning, Goranga covertly organizes an aircraft, and the group departs on their quest. Santanu continues to believe that everything is a joke, but as they approach the alleged wormhole, everything begins to tremble.
Behu is forced to do an emergency landing in a field as the plane experiences a sudden malfunction. Compared to the region they just left, this one seems quite different. The three quickly request a ride in a vintage car as it approaches. When they finally arrive in Kolkata, Santanu finds they have actually arrived in 1984. Everything reminds me of the 1980s, the people, the hotels, the buses, and the streets. Santanu decides to complete their mission despite being startled by the bizarre situation. He wants to get something off his chest, though, first. He goes to an orphanage at night, where it is discovered that Santanu is an orphan and was abandoned there in the year 1984. After some time of waiting, a car driven by two men pulls up, dropping the baby inside. Santanu dashes inside to see if the infant is really him from the past, and he confirms his suspicion with a locket. He meets up with Daz and Behu the following morning, and the three get to work planning their next move. Daz, a former close buddy of Mitra's, explains that the JL-50 hijacking covert meeting would take place this evening in a warehouse outside. Later, the group arrives to the location and waits for the offenders to show up. Behu refuses to respond when Santanu inquires about if she saw her stillborn child with her own eyes inside the automobile. Behu only claims that she passed out following the delivery and that when she awoke the following morning, her parents had informed her that her baby had passed away. As the meeting is starting, Mitra, Partho, and other goons show up to the warehouse. As a result, the three decide on a strategy, Daz and Santana would fight the goons inside, and Behu will wait in the car. The plan is for the two to enter and point their guns at Mitra and his men. However, just then, the goons also fire, starting a deadly shootout. Fortunately, Santanu defeats the goons one by one using his excellent fighting abilities. At the conclusion, he also eliminates Partho, while Dr. Daz murders Mitra, his former mentor. Now that the task has been completed, Santanu attempts to burn the suitcase with the Project A files, but surprise, Daz holds him at gunpoint and orders him to back off. It becomes clear at this point that Daz's plan was always the ultimate goal. The precise coordinates for the time travel wormholes were lost because the original Project A papers were destroyed in the JL-50 disaster. Daz, though, was not prepared to give up so quickly. So when Santanu approached him for questioning, he had an idea. He made the decision to utilize the CBI officer to go back in time and take the Project A files, which would allow him to achieve immortality. Daz also says that he arrived at Mitra's house on the day Mitra ran away from the hospital. But instead of assisting, Daz killed him, removing a significant roadblock from his path. With this information, the two begin to fire at one another, but Daz gets off the worst shots, allowing Santanu to permanently destroy the papers. Then, as he and Bihu are about to leave, an agonizing sound suddenly strikes all three of them. It turns out that Mitra and his men's deaths prevented the airliner JL-50 from being hijacked, hence the three never went back in time. Santanu, Daz, and Bihu are all whisked back to the present because the timeline is now rejecting undesired anomalies. However, a slight alteration to the past causes an entirely new and alternate future. Santanu and his wife are shown flying in A026 in the closing scene, and their plane is not hijacked. In reality, neither JL-50 nor Flight A026 have ever been hijacked because the bad guys were put to death in 1984. Even when they cross paths in the aircraft, Shantanu and Gorango fail to recognize one another. This implies that in this parallel universe, the two never grew close, and Shantanu probably never even got the chance to become an officer with the CBI. The following day, Santanu shows up at the same orphanage to celebrate his birthday. He is playing with the youngsters when an elderly Behu comes over and gives him a tight hug. In an unexpected change of events, it is discovered that Behu's son was indeed born alive. Since the child was born before Behu was married, her father actually gave it to the orphanage out of concern that society wouldn't accept her. The youngster is none other than Santanu. However, in the alternate history, Bihu's mother eventually told her the truth, which led to their reunion after the JL-50 flight landed safely. The two have never been apart in this timeline. The film concludes with Santanu and his mother giving out gifts and playing with the orphan children. Both are appreciative of their new lives and are sympathetic.